Welcome to the Cinemasters, where we talk about movies and shows and pitch them back to each other. <laughs> <laughs> do you want me? Do you want me to do this? Yeah, do it. Okay. I thought I had it. Welcome. You are entering into a strange dimension. A dimension where narratives from across space and time come together. Narratives that could have, might have, or should have been all exist here in one space. This is Cinemasters Ultimate Timeline. Welcome back to Cinemasters. This is the show where we watch terrible or crazy movies or whatever movies, and then we pitch them back to one another, trying to see if we can make them better or see if we can care about them more. I'm Andrew uh, or DeJangles, and today I'm joined by, by Alyssa. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> Alyssa is currently recovering from the fact that she couldn't start Cinemasters a couple times because apparently I'm not allowed to look at her. Um, so she may be in a currently having a fit. Um, no, I'm fine. <laughs> okay. <good. laughs> um, today, of course, we're talking about Rise of the Guardians. Rise of the Guardians. I love this movie. What'd you say? I love this movie. Yeah, I watched this movie in 2013. Yeah, I watched this movie in 2013, and um, it's pretty good. It's it's not terrible. Um, I remember liking it a lot more the first time I watched it. This time around, I liked it less. Really? Yeah. I think I have a really good pitch for it, but I liked this movie the first time I watched it. I was like, oh, this is really interesting. Like, a unique way to, like, show each of the, um, I guess, mythical creatures or fairy tale characters that we're, that we know. And, uh, but, but I, I did think that there was some, like, glaring plot holes in this movie. Really? Yeah. And we'll get to okay. them, but like, why? Let's start with goods. Then, what what are the things that you liked about this? I really liked the character designs and the casting and like, all of that. Like, it was it was great. Mm -hmm. Everything lined up perfectly in my brain, and <laughs> they were yeah, they were awesome. Yeah, the I thought the casting was unreal. Like, who do we got? We got uh, um, Jude Law, Chris Pine, uh, Isla Fisher. Um, Hugh Jackman, Alec Baldwin, like it was crazy, like all these crazy, like big names, and it works. Mm -hmm. Like I was down with that. This, this works for me. Um, and the, I do think that the characters like do come to life, and like I love the re, like the way Santa Claus like is like a Russian pirate. He was awesome. <laughs> Very down with that. Um, and the, like the uh, the fact that the Easter Bunny is is Australian. I don't really know why, other than an excuse to have Hugh Jackman in it. <laughs> yeah. Like, why would the Easter Bunny be Australian? Like, that, that made a little bit of no sense to me. Um, and then, okay, this is a big thing in terms of character design, because you brought it up, so I'm just going to get into it. Okay. Um, I think this movie is visually gorgeous. Yes. And, like, the characters look really cool, except the Tooth Fairy freaks me the fuck out. Why? I don't know, like the skin feather mixture and it's like shiny and gross and like tight and I mean I, I guess I don't like looking at her. <laughs> she just I guess me out. she's like, is she a bird or a fairy or a human? Like fucking pick one. And the little baby teeth are like super cute, except for the part where their skin meets flesh, and then I'm like, ugh. I don't know. I thought it was a very interesting design. Of I like it. Of course it is. It's unique. It's just very. It's just, every time I look at it, I'm like, just like this, is a freaky looking thing. <laughs> and then, and then some of the proportions are a little bit out. Like, like Jack Frost looks like Jack Skellington. Like he's so long and gangly. I'm like, yo, tell this kid to eat a fucking sandwich. Uh, like, I mean, yeah, a little bit. <laughs> but and no, none of the other kids look like him or adults. I think that also might have to do with his background a little bit. You mean like the fact that he's dead? <laughs> well, no, they're all they're all technically they were dead, but I think that because he came from like a, a I want to say like a poor family, but they didn't look poor. They just looked like no, they looked like they were just back in time. Like it's 300 yeah. years ago or whatever. Yeah. Mm. I don't know. Times are different. Were people thinner then? I got no idea. People were starving more then. 
That's what I mean. <laughs> uh, I do think Jude Law does a, an awesome job as a villain. He's got such a great voice for that. Also, he had no eyebrows, and that really, like, sealed it, the deal for how scary, scary he was. He is. Yeah, it makes him look <laughs> creepy. Yeah. They also, like, all of the the, the imaginary, quote-unquote imaginary characters look, like, fantastical. Like, it looks like they're made out of, like, something different than flesh and blood. Mm-hmm. That was pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Particularly also, Sandman. Santa was just awesome. Yeah, he is pretty cool. It, it's a different take, and I do like that. It's a different take. So, uh, um, I will say that I think Sandman is the best character. Yes. He's the coolest. 100%. 100%. Um, He's so expressive. Yeah. It's so fun to have, like, that kind of character, all visual gags, like, very cool. Mm-hmm. Um, what were some things that you didn't like? Or even more I things honest, that you did like? I honestly don't have anything bad listed for this movie. Really? Like, I, I really couldn't find anything. Okay. I have a lot of things that I didn't like, but I tried to fix them okay. in my pitch. Like, But I'll get around to it. So, like... Um... I don't I I guess the big one for me the one that like was the most glaring was like people's memories are in their teeth. <laughs> like, I mean, <laughs> it kind of also like it made sense. No, it doesn't. The, if you like follow like mythology back, like that's ne- not necessarily like their memories are in their teeth, but like teeth are a good like good You can't luck even hold this time. argument. <laughs> That's bullshit. Like, I know why it needs to make sense for the story, but, like, it just, that seemed like such a thin thread to me. It was like, how do we keep the Tooth Fairy relevant? Oh, she, memories are kept in people's teeth, and this is why Jack needs to find his teeth, and that's why it's important. Like, (laughs) to me, it felt like we're using this as a, as plot. Like, this is our central plot device. Teeth have memories. That's why the Tooth Fairy is important. Oh, like, that's where we're going with this? Like... No, that doesn't make any sense to me. It just, why would, I did not like that. Um, I did not like that. I think there are ways that you could argue it makes sense. It, but it only makes sense I think you just have problems story. with the Tooth Fairy. Yeah, the Tooth Fairy <laughs> Did the Tooth Fairy never, never come to your house? Okay, I, we're going to get into this then, okay? Oh, the, no. <laughs> the Tooth Fairy did come to my house. I have a really big problem with um, believing in, in make-believe characters. Uh huh. Because it's the same thing as lying. Okay. Right. Like, yeah. like you're literally telling your children to believe in Santa Claus or the Tooth Fairy. I have a big problem with that because you're like, you are withholding information, or like by not telling them that it's false, or you're actively giving false information to a child. Right. Isn't that like m- super morally wrong? Like, you are actively lying to a child. It's weird to think about it that way. But that's what it is. Like, people will say, but what about the magic of of make-belief? Like, yeah, you can make belief in a lot of things, but why are you perpetuating this kind of falsehood? In a lot of ways, Mm -hmm. you can draw comparisons between, like, religion and these kind of, like, make-belief things, Mm -hmm. right? Like Santa Claus and whatnot. And, and, I mean, we all know that I'm, like, a super atheist, but, but, um... I, ju- I really think that that's problematic. Like, why is this this kind of lie any different from any other kind of lie? Like, to get really dark about it and kind of terrible dark, like, telling your children that daddy will come home, you know what I mean? When he's never going to come home is the same kind mm-hmm. of lie as being like Santa Claus is the one that brings all your presents and he delivers them all in one night to every good little girl and boy. Like, this to me it feels like and same with the boogeyman it feels like one of those things where you were like if you're good you know santa will bring a present and if you're bad he'll bring coal you know if you're good you know lots of good things will happen to you and if you're or if you're good the sandman will come and put you dry, give you good good dreams but if you're bad then the boogeyman will come and scare you or carry you off into the night or whatever these are all mm-hmm. these kind of like moral um very like you know the brothers grim kind of moral, moralistic plays that are to be like oh you know be good or the boogeyman will come or baba yaga or or all these different you know make-believe things from all over the world not just the west like that's why i mentioned baba yaga is like famous in russian or the um you know there's like all these these awesome characters from all over but they're very much like you know superstitious make-believe and why is this okay to like perpetuate that 
right? Mm-hmm. I don't know. I've got nothing to add to this. <laughs> you've, <laughs> you've clearly put a lot more thought into this than I have. I put a lot of thought into weird things. It just seems to me like, like why are we believing? Why do we perpetuate this kind of belief? Yeah. This kind of, I mean, it's a lie. There's nothing else to it. But it's for the magic. No, you're still <laughs> lying. Like, or by the very least, you're lying by omission. Like, um, I don't think my children will believe in Santa Claus. Really? Why? You can, I can still enjoy movies about Santa Claus without believing in him. There are lots of That's fictional, true. I mean, we do that all the time. I don't necessarily <laughs> think Harry Potter is like a realized entity, right? But that doesn't right. mean I stopped enjoying, you know, the magic behind the story. The, you know, the magic in the story, and I'm talking about, like, belief magic, not about, like, Harry Potter magic. The The magic behind the story wasn't, for me, wasn't because it was real. It was because it was a book where I wanted to know, you know, what these characters were going to go through. How are they going to solve this problem, you know? Mm-hmm. In the most basic sense. Like, you also get attached to the characters in other ways. And, and there's different ways we can talk about what exists if we want to get into ontology like what what exists for versus what doesn't exist so yeah but but my my basic point is is that these characters are not real in the most basic sense and therefore like why are we perpetuating that they are real that some little bunny that poops out eggs which is biologically (laughs) inaccurate you know have you ever seen a bunny poop out eggs because no. they don't poop out eggs. They poop out little <laughs> balls that look like eggs, but they're not made with chocolate. <laughs> that's just awful. Yeah, it's just poop. Um, yeah. Anyway, that's that's my <laughs> rant on that particular <laughs> thing. Um, another pro- the biggest, Another big problem that I had is I was sort of confused about how the power system works. Mm-hmm. So I thought it was kind of based off of like, Terry Pratchett's small gods. And mm-hmm. so in that, like the more people who believe in you, the more powerful you are as a God. Yes. So in this, I was like, Oh, does the more power they have come from people's belief in them? Because that's sort of what's given away. And then the tooth fairy like loses all her power when no one believes in her. Yeah. Except Jack Frost. No one believes in him at the beginning and he has all his power. Right. Does it come from the staff? Like that was not explained either. Like the staff breaks and he's just like stuck in this crevasse, crevice, and then uh, <laughs> fixes the staff with his ice power, which he shouldn't have because no one believes in him. And all of a sudden now he's like powerful again and can t- control the wind. Like, first of all, what maybe are his it's powers? the power of believing in yourself. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm fine with that. That's fine. But it's not outright stated. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, this movie is... To be fair, I'm being harsh on this movie. This movie was fun. I liked watching it. It, You're just like, yeah, man, it's super fun. And, like, bright colors and all the magic. What if they are real? We can believe in them. And they'll fight back the power of fear. Yeah. But, like, when you really get into the nitty gritty, there's some things in here where I'm like, okay, but... You know, if, if, if people's powers are based on belief, like, the Easter Bunny clearly becomes, like, a little bunny again. And the Tooth Fairy, like, loses all of her power. Then what why can jack do all this stuff or and then where does um you know pitch black the boogeyman get all of his power from he clearly wants to be believed in right yeah he's trying to get the kids to fear him so that the others lose their power and believe in him so he can have more power because to me it already looks like he has a lot of power he fucking killed the sandman yeah okay now you yeah i guess my question here is is like really what are the stakes yeah, and what like, what are the what are the rules too? Because well, because if we know the rules to the magic, then we know what the stakes are. Yeah, right. I just I just want to know, like, apart from Jack wanting to know who he is or where he came from, which is fine. That's great character motivation. What are the actual stakes? Mm-hmm. Because nothing happens to the Tooth Fairy other than the fact that she loses all her power because no one believes in her anymore. But Jack had no one believing in him, or that's at least implied, and. He still he had all still his power. still do snow days and all that fun stuff. Yeah. And then when 
when pitch black shows up the boogeyman shows up he's all like you know no one believes in me and now it's time to shake things up i'm gonna have people believe in me again so like, yeah but where are you getting all this power from you you can make nightmares and now you can like contort and and change um the sandman's dreams into nightmares and it's like where are you getting this power from if no one believes in you right I did like the idea that, like, when the Dark Ages ended or whatever, like, the Boogeyman went away. Like, as yes. we, like, learn more about the world, the Boogeyman went away. That was pretty cool. Like, like mm-hmm. to sort of parallel, like, their history with, with human history. Mm-hmm. But I don't know. There's a one point in time where, like, the little kid is like, you guys don't believe? Like, why is everything changing with you? And I was like, it's puberty. Like, they're yeah. growing up. It's puberty. <laughs> like... And they're like, it's the nightmares. And I was like, puberty is a nightmare. <laughs> in yes, a lot it is. of ways. <laughs> but do you see what I mean? Like, I like this movie, but There were some questions. There were some yeah. questionable I, things. In I mean, I didn't stories. have any, but now I have many. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, in terms of some good things, I will say, like, like I said, the animation is gorgeous, the acting was gorgeous. There's one point in time where the Sandman's like making a bunch of like dreams come out of people's memories at the very end when he like comes back mm-hmm. and all of a sudden like a dinosaur appears and the score basically plays the Jurassic Park theme. Oh, did it? Yeah. You can just hear like a little bit of like the da 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 like just as a, an homage to Jurassic Park. And when I heard that, I was like, best part of the movie. That's the best part right there. Best part wow. of the movie. I know it's not even relevant. Like, it's basically just, like, this big triumphant thing. But, like, dinosaurs with the Jurassic Park theme. Sold. Fucking sold. Wow. <laughs> what can I say? Amazing. I like Jurassic Park. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, these are the things that I look for and, and stuff like that. Uh, yeah. Uh, I don't know. The whole idea of, like, the nightmares turning on Pitch Black was supposed to be, like, poetic irony. Mm-hmm. Like, they can smell his fear. But, like. I don't know. I had a lot of issues with how things were portrayed in this movie. Belief, powers, magic, fear. I just took it all unquestioningly. I was like, yes, this is great. I'm enjoying a lot of this. Well, tell me about (laughs) what are the things that you liked then? Like, like refute me. I'll shut up for a minute. Um, Well, I really liked like the the lore of, of the characters and stuff. So finding out that, you know, at one point, all of these characters were people which made me suddenly start to question like how old is everyone because the tooth fairy knows what the easter bunny was like before he was the easter bunny and like how old is sandman because dreams are you know they've been around for a really long time yeah so i was like i think those two are like the oldest but is it dreams or is it just like the sandman like the know. idea of the Sandman, like there's a lot of lore that's left unspoken. I know, which and is... and like then we get into the. I mean, we can, I can have more questions for you about philosophy if you want. I don't know, but I I just really liked that, and I actually I played around with it a little bit more on my pitch. Yeah, so did I, I. Was like I really like the idea of different guardians being different ages, yeah. and it's like. And how they came to be and stuff like that. So Wait, I'll throw it to you just because I can. So the, they all talk about how like they were made by the man in the moon. And then the guardians were chosen by the man in the moon. Mm-hmm. That means Pitch Black was, must have been made by the man in the moon. Yeah, at some point. So like, what would be the purposes of the man in the moon making Pitch Black? Unless he's like a self-made... But but uh, if they can villain. just like make themselves like this raises a lot of questions about like I existence, know. I know. how they exist, because like if the man in the moon is the one who made them all, then who made the man in the moon? And if they can just make themselves, the did pitch black, did pitch black just like sort of make himself? I tried to explain how that works in my pitch, and I think it works really, really well, in fact. Yeah. So I think that, well, I think that that just, I'm wondering if pitch would be like as old as the sun or something because you know you have light and then you have the dark and then so he's the moon just like but is he a, that's another thing is he a manifestation of fear or of darkness yeah i don't know it's hard. I, I think it would be like you know darkness. what i'm gonna put a spin on our classic uh our, our classic like catchphrase slash slogan okay. which is and i think it might be 
It might actually be, but I think this should have been a book. Yes. I think you'd be able to get across a lot more ideas and, and to have Jack Frost as your main character, but slowly like tell the story. I wonder if this is a book. This feels like it was a book to me. The more mm-hmm. I'm thinking about it. If it is, I'll read it. Uh, I also It'd be feel a great like book to read. I also feel like this movie should have a sequel. Like it feels like it needs a sequel. I'm like this was epic enough that like this feels like it needs a sequel to me. But they tie they tied off most of the ends. Yeah, I, I'm not saying that it needs a setup. I mean, I'm not saying that it was all set up. I'm saying like if this had a sequel, I'd be into it. Like it feels it feels good to me. Like I was like this feels epic enough that like something could be done with this. Um. Oh yeah, I'm looking right here. It says there was a possible idea for a sequel. Um like something that could have been made here, but uh there's st- apparently they were in talks for a long time, but there's they, everything got stalled, but apparently there was an the idea for a sequel. I'm just wondering mm. is it a book series? Rise of the Guardians books. Internet, save me. Yes, apparently it is. Rise of the Guardian book series. Here we go. Written by? William Joyce. William Joyce. Yeah. And I think the, the it looks like... Uh, that name sounds familiar. It looks like there's five books. Yeah, I didn't I didn't look this up, but it looks like there's five books. and But they're like young children's books. So it says here that they're ages 7 to 11. Oh, okay. Yeah. Five books in the Rise of the Guardian series. And they use a lot of the... Either the um, the movie was inspired by the way that they were drawn. Uh, or the this version that I'm looking at is like... Drawn to look like... Or they took inspiration from this to look like uh, the movies. But mm-hmm. yeah. Uh, I, I think it's, like, it's a really neat idea. Really neat universe. And like if it's that young of an age group then i have a feeling it's probably not going to answer a lot of our questions probably but that not. doesn't mean like the world won't be built more in in uh in the writing i think he, information comes across more in words um in books in that way than it than it can in movies just depends on how you mm-hmm. deal with it you can get a lot across in movies visually but um I, yeah. I really think like i would be very interested in seeing what the books were like compared to the movies but yeah yeah. If they have the same plot holes. Yeah. Uh, I'm quite <laughs> proud of my pitch. I think it's a good one. Uh, I'm quite proud of mine, too. Well, I put I a lot first. of thought and effort into it. Okay. Okay. I'll go first. go first. All right. <clears throat> so, um, my movie starts out with Bat- Jack being created, but it's not clear who or what created him. And all he knows when he was first created is that his name is Jack Frost. I did like the, the, the phrase, like, my name is Jack Frost, and I know this because the moon told me. That's just a wicked, like, sentence to say. Like, oh, I know because the moon told me. And you're like, that mm-hmm. sounds dope. But it doesn't make sense for my pitch. So, no. He just knows his name is Jack <laughs> Frost. Um, so then, you know, this is like a couple hundred years into the past. Um, uh, so then we have Santa Claus doing his whole, like, you know, his whole thing. And he's, like, making, you know, presents and whatnot and being santa claus and then he sees like the boogeyman or pitch black has come back and so he calls for the other guardians to come back together and so then we get the other guardians uh the sandman and santa claus who we've met the tooth fairy and the easter bunny and they show up and they're four mythical creatures who have more power than any other of the the mythical creatures um so long ago these four creatures characters whatever make believe people got together and they decided that they would do whatever they could to protect the children from unhappiness because their power comes from belief and there's no stronger belief than the belief that comes from children so they were like well we need to protect the children because they're the ones who give us our power and we need to make mm-hmm. sure that we we do what's in their best interest for them so we got to keep them safe um, so they banded together as the four strongest and they cast pitch black out and now they're basically like the kind of police over the make-believe world as they protect the children. Um, so Bunny, Easter Bunny is like, I think we can, like we beat Pitch Black once. I think we can do it again. And Santa, he's the leader. He basically says like, he's the most powerful. He's like, I think we can 
beat him as well, but I think it would be wise to have a backup plan because, you know, Pitch knows our moves now. So I think it's a wise to have a backup plan. I propose that we select someone to become a new guardian as an insurance policy, as a way to make sure that P- and Pitch will never see it coming. So, of course, the other three are like, well, anyone could want to become a guardian because if you become a guardian, it means you have more like prestige and more kids will believe in you because you have more like you're one of the guardians. And so like there's, you know, anyone would want to become a guardian because it would give them more power. So we need to be careful. So Santa says, I think we should pick. um, Well, we definitely shouldn't pick like the leprechaun. We shouldn't pick the April Fool. And we can name a couple like different ones. Um and then and then uh, Santa thinks it would be a good idea to pick Jack Frost because he's not overly ambitious. He just mm-hmm. he just does his own thing, but he clearly has like a lot of power. So and so we're in present day. Jack is having a snow day with the kids, and he's skating and doing all sorts of cool things because they're having their snow day. And the kids like do believe in him, and like some of the adults, there is like some belief in him because they're like, oh man, Jack Frost. And then. Um, uh, but like most people just think it's an expression. So that's where he gets like some of his power from. Um, so we see Jack create a- an awesome ice slide, like a toboggan hill with a big jump. And one of the kids is just like, yes, I am all about this. I'm going to go down and without hesitation. And he jumps off this huge like toboggan ramp and he breaks his arm. <gasps> and his mom is like, what were you thinking? Like this broken arm, like this is, you got to be careful. Like, like, you know, he's like, you, you ruin snow you've ruined your snow day because like you broke your arm and he's like, you know, Oh, and the kid's like, but it was just such a perfect jump. Like, and the mom's like, Oh, that Jack Frost is nothing but trouble. Sort of as like a throwaway line. So Jack is then approached by the guardians. He's like, man, I just want to have fun with the kids. He's then approached by the guardians who tell him like, we want you to be a guardian. And we chose you because you're not over concerned with power or belief. You just use your powers to have fun. And the bunny's like, yeah, you just cause mischief. And Jack's like, no, nah, man, it's just fun. Like, And Jack's like, no, nah, I'm not really interested in being a guardian. Like, I'm content with being where I'm at. And I'm not overly concerned with protecting the kids and whatnot. I just I just want to have fun. But if uh, the one thing that I would like to know is is where do I come from? Like, how do, how do I, where do we come from? And Santa's like, you know, if you choose to become a guardian, I can tell you that. But we're not completely sure. We really don't, really, really don't really know. No one does. Mm-hmm. Uh, but we can share with you what we know. And uh, and the, uh, the other four sort of give each other, like, knowing looks, but don't say anything. So then all of a sudden Pitch Black shows up, and he begins putting, like, shadows under the beds and closets of, in, in the closets of children, like, waiting for the night. And the Guardians face off with him because they think, you know, this fear is, he's just going to make kids, like, fearful and whatnot. And Jack stays with the Guardians, but he mostly stays out of it. He's, like, watching the battle because he's, like, and he's staying hidden so that they don't realize, like, he's... That pitch doesn't realize he's like with them, um, and and you know he's he's kind of gaining interest. He's like, okay, this could be neat. Um, so they, you know, ja- or, uh, pitch black basically says he they're only interested in keeping all the children believing in them, so they can keep their power. They have like created a kind of monopoly on on belief, and mm-hmm. that's why pitch black wants to change it up. So the guardians tell Jack they're basically like the fear and darkness will stop the kids from believing in happiness, and that. And they, they use their power to drive pitch black, pitch black back, or so mm-hmm. they think. So that night, all the shadows that, that pitch black put into places and under beds, you know, start working to change the Sandman's dreams into nightmares. And the next day, the children are shaken and scared. And this causes pitch black to become more powerful because they believe in the boogeyman more. So Sandman is furious that his dreams were, like, ruined by pitch black. And so the Guardians, again, seek him out this time. And this time Jack's like, yo, that wasn't a very cool thing to do. Like, you made the kids scared. And he sees, like, this fear is 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 bad for the kids. And I'm all about having fun. So he decides to team up with the Guardians. He's like, I'm in. And they're like, cool. So we'll make you, like, we'll officially make you a Guardian once we get rid of Pitch Black. And he's like, down. But it turns out this battle that they're fighting is actually just a, di- a diversion. Because while they're fighting, all of the shadows start stealing the teeth from the tooth fairy like from under pillows uh, or basically stop the the tooth fairy from collecting all the teeth and uh, all of a sudden people start they stop believing in the tooth fairy and jack is like yo i can't believe you did that and so he's like i'm gonna chase after pitch black and he goes and the other guardians are like 
w- still with the tooth fairy and he goes after pitch black and he's like why are you doing things and he's like i'm trying to chase change things up jack like you and i are not so different but like you know um the guardians control and 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 they control what children believe through that kind of control uh, which i don't think is fair like i want to be believed in um and, and and he's like so why do you like i know I know the only thing you want to know is where you come from. It's the thing you fear the most. And I can just tell that. And the other guardians know where you come from, Jack. They know how this whole thing works. And he's like, what do you, what do you mean the other guardians know? And he's like, why don't you go see for yourself? Go and watch what happens to the tooth fairy. And so Jack heads back to see the other guardians. And he watches that as the kids slowly stop believing in the tooth fairy, she disappears from existence. She stops Mm -hmm. existing. They can still remember her, so it's not like she just like, but like she like disappears, and Jack's like, um, what just happened? And Santa's like, you know, mythical creatures only exist as long as someone believes in them, and 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 you know, and it cannot be another spirit; it has to be like a human. And so the belief that the children have, belief that children have, is the strongest belief, and that's why they protect the children because their belief is so precious. It's what keeps them alive. And now the tooth fairy is, you know, gone because no one believes. So that where we all came from is because someone out there made us up and started believing in us and shared us and made us, you know, more powerful. So Jack is basically devastated to find this out. He's like, I've been so preoccupied with having fun that I didn't realize people might stop believing in me. And so he's like, you know, I could just, people could just like stop believing and I would just disappear like the tooth fairy. And so he starts, he's like, I, you know, I would be nothing. So he basically is like, I'm dependent on people believing in me. And so he leaves the guardians and that night he begins going around like the world causing snow and ice and everything he can to make people believe in him. Like just blizzards and out the wazoo. And uh, so more people do start believing in him because they're like, oh, man, Jack Frost has been here. Look at this like blizzard or this ice storm or whatever. Mm -hmm. And so this slowly makes Jack become stronger. But this also causes a lot of injuries due to like ice and destruction of property and whatnot due to the weather. And the Guardians begin to take notice. They're like, what are you doing there, Jack? And and they basically stop Jack. They're like, this kind of belief is not helping. It's not hope. It's hurting people. And, and Jack's like, well, why should I believe in you? Like, or why should I believe anything you say? Like, you told me, you never told anyone else about how belief is where we come from. And so they fight. But Jack is now much stronger with having more adults and kids believe in him. And he's like, you know, the Guardians are like, well, now you're just being like pitch. You're being like pitch black. You're trying to get people to believe in you through the wrong method, right? Like, you're not bringing joy. You're just hurting people. And Jack's like, you know, I don't want to be like pitch, but... You know, what choice do I have if I could disappear at any time? Like, my power doesn't really bring people joy. I just make ice. Mm -hmm. Right? I make frost. So he fights. But Santa is then like, yo, I'm Santa Claus. And he, like, brings out the full might of his force and beats Jack back because he's motherfucking Santa Claus. Yeah. (laughs) So this makes Jack angry. But before he can do anything about it, Pitch shows up. And he's like, oh, like, you're here to finish me off? And Pitch is like, oh, no, no, no. I think we should join forces because you see... The thing that you do and the thing that I do, well, it's not quite different. And Jack is like, yo, I don't want to be anything like you. And the two of them fight, but this time Jack wins. And his, like his, with his new power and his anger, he's like way more powerful. And Pitch is like frozen solid. And he like talks to Jack. He says, you know, we can't kill each other. The only way we can stop existing is if kids stop or everyone stops believing in us. Then we just, that's when we die. And he's like, you know, the truth, Jack, is, is that I know you're scared of stopping of, of like, not existing and me too that's the only thing that drives me is i'm scared of not existing um uh so back jack's like yeah and pitch continues he's like you know my power is fear that's all i have like uh, that's what i was made as that's how the the people believe in me so my power is fear and if fear is what keep, keep keeps the kids and people believing in me then then how can i not use that otherwise i'll just stop existing same with mm-hmm. you. your power is snow and ice and sometimes those things hurt people but like does that mean we should stop using them like does that mean you know snow and ice is not necessarily a bad thing it just sometimes can hurt people but the guardians decided that because they were the strongest only their brand of belief was worthy of protecting the children because it brought hope and the other kind sometimes brings harm and so that's right. how they decided the world was going to be when they joined forces 
So they thought they were doing the right thing, but Pitch watched. This is the first time Pitch came around. Pitch watched as other mythical creatures began to disappear because they were deemed harmful. They were deemed mm-hmm. as, as bad. And and all of a sudden, you know, there was a line that was drawn by the Guardians saying, like, if you're on this side, you're good. And if you're on this side, you're bad. And and only those who are good can have belief. And Pitch watched as his friends and different mythical creatures were slowly, like, forgotten and disappeared. Yeah. And he was like, whoa, this is not okay. And he's like, some of the some of these creatures and, and, and things that I can't even remember them anymore because no one... No one f- remembers them, right? So he's like, I miss, I miss things that I can't explain. I miss my friends, but I don't know who they are because I've forgotten them. Um, and that'll happen to the tooth fairy. S- s- that'll happen to the tooth fairy. And like, the reason I did that is because I think other people need to see this is what happens. Like you, they've created like a monopoly on belief. Um. Yeah. So the guardians, like, this is long ago. So Jack is like, whoa, I never really thought about it that way. Um, but we, we, we really, I guess we really shouldn't hurt people as much as possible. And pitch is like, but I don't know how to do it any other way. I don't know how to like stop people from, you know, feeling fear. And, and Jack is like, well, fear is not necessarily a bad thing. Like fear can keep people safe as long as it's not fear over nothing. Like as long as you're not just afraid of nothing, like being scared, and the like but the boogeyman you know can teach people to be cautious if if but maybe you should like tone it down a bit <laughs> instead of just like creating <laughs> nightmares and so pitch per- pitch black not pitch perfect pitch black is like okay <laughs> all right okay so the two of them agree to find the guardians and they and jack and pitch black have teamed up and the guardians are like whoa we trusted you what are you doing with pitch black and jack is like hold up i think i think he has a point i think you've been unfairly ostracizing you know these mythical creatures simply because you called them bad but like it shouldn't it be shouldn't everyone have the right to be believed in like once we're thought up until we're forgotten shouldn't we have the right to be believed in like doesn't isn't that how the way it should be um and they're like okay but what do we do about the tooth fairy like he he got rid of the tooth fairy and jack's like actually i think i have a way we can solve that um and that's basically before we forget her for for good i have a way to solve this and so um the sandman santa you know easter bunny jack and and the boogeyman all use their powers to like replace teeth with pillows from around the world as much as they can so that people start believing in the tooth fairy again and she comes back Mm -hmm. and we can have this whole thing where they're like i do believe in fairies i do i do (laughs) classic um so she comes back into existence and everything's all good and then they ask jack again they're like You know, this was all your plan and whatnot. And we told you, you know, do you want to become a guardian? And Jack says, no, actually, I just want to have fun and go back to what I was doing before all this nonsense. I think you should actually make the boogeyman a guardian. And they're all like, "Uh, what? And he's like, I don't think he was using his power correctly. But like, if you use fear correctly, you can actually like guard children from dangerous things if they're scared of it that fear keeps them safe and he's kind of like always been the best guardian anyway you just never really saw it that way um right and so but instead santa claus says no i refuse we're actually going to make both of you guardians because it was always your idea and you seem to like really understand the fun that that children need to have but we also need to keep them safe the way the boogeyman is and we also need to see things from a different point of view because clearly we've been like disregarding other mythical creatures. So Jack's like cool and he goes back to his little town where he creates like a new awesome snow day and a super slide of ice and snow. Like, a, and you know, he's like just having his fun and doing his thing. And then he creates like another toboggan hill like he did before, like another bit. And this another kid, a different kid, <coughs> looks at the hill and he's like about to go down. And his friends are like, no way. And then all of a sudden, like, something black changes his, in his eyes. And the kid goes, you know what? That's too big for me. I'm too scared. I don't want to get hurt. And Jack chuckles to himself because he's like, oh, good job there. And then yeah. he, changes, he, he, like, changes the size of the hill so that it's not so big. And the kids start going down it. And they have an awesome yeah. snow day. And that, That's great. I know. <laughs> That's probably one That's of my really better good. ones. That's a really good. Another, like, feel good one. Well, that's probably one of my better ones because I, I really thought like there was this whole if, if if belief is how they exist and you you have this whole economy of belief, right? 
because there's only so much belief in the world. You can only have so many kids and so many, which means that your power is literally controlled by the economy of belief. And so I was like, oh, if the guardians like banded together to create like a system, like they literally there and, and they are the four like most in, at least in Western culture, they're the four like most biggest mythical icons, the Easter Bunny, Santa Claus, Sandman, Tooth Fairy. I guess you could include like the April Fool and the St. Patrick's Leprechaun and stuff like that. But, mm-hmm. you know, those kinds of ideas are, are like the biggest ones. And I was like, but d- they must have a monopoly like on like, I don't know. What about the Arbor Day tree? <laughs> Is that a thing? <laughs> I don't know. I just made it up. Do we, get, would it groundhog. be like an end like from yeah uh, i mean but you could do stuff Lord like that like, like what about the groundhog from groundhog day you yeah know what i mean like uh or bill murray um if that's what you want your <laughs> if i was gonna do a cameo i would have the groundhog show up and have him played by bill murray yeah that'd be way too perfect but no the point here was is to have this like what about the other creatures like what about the ones we don't remember anymore mm-hmm. and 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 all, but also like have the history of actual make belief characters be in there and be like we can't even remember some of them because we don't remember them like in in actual there's something called the more philosophy there's something called the subaltern history which is like histories that exist that we don't remember so they're not history because history is only what gets written down right right so there's like this idea that there are like histories alternate histories out there the subaltern that are like hidden within our own history that we write down that are not remembered or not considered history because they were never written down. Mm -hmm. And so that's really sad to think about. Yeah. Like we've lost some history. So there's this, I mean, the classic example that we use in music is the idea of the lute. Yes. The lute is like this classic European instrument, right? When you hear it, you're like, Oh, that's medieval Europe, except the lute is an African instrument by trade. Like it it Mm -hmm. came up through Africa, which means like an instrument that we think of as like perfectly European and like was, was, was created and changed in European. That's where we get like the violin. It's where we guitars come from. It's where, you know, all of these are, are a kind of lute that was like transformed. All of that is somehow related back to Africa, but we have no idea how. So there's Hmm. this history that we associate with Europe, which is in fact should be associated with africa but we have no idea how all of that history is lost yeah and so our association with europe is in fact inaccurate yeah yeah so cool that's that subaltern every day yeah um yeah that's basically what i was trying to do is is really like let's talk about problems of existence problems of economy and problems of belief and power Mm -hmm. and the subaltern i don't know if that i I took a little bit different of a route (laughs) let's hear it where uh okay so i messaged you and i was like hey could i do like something other than just rewriting the story like would a prequel work or of course right and then i was sitting there and as as i started my pitch i was originally going to write it out as like two different ones then choose the better one to pitch yeah and then i was sitting there going i could just like why not merge both? these <laughs> and it would be great um and so my original two pitches were going to be like um a rewrite of the movie, um, but having it so that there are, like, that each guardian or each, like, mythical creature has a pair, which is, or, like, a paired evil version of itself. Evil Santa Claus? Krampus? <laughs> yeah, I guess. Right? I don't know if I would pick Krampus as evil Santa Claus. I, I don't know. In, I don't know. Like, evil, wouldn't, in, if it was like the... I mean, I know exactly what you mean. It's just to me, if it was yeah. like the opposite, wouldn't it be like some old dude who lives at the bottom of the the world? The South Pole? Yeah. That's what, that's what I said. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Anyway, go on. I don't know. But anyway, so I, like, I had that idea, and then I'm just going to use Krampus in this one because... I that was the only one I could actually think of. Yeah. But there are others that I had come up with. There's a meme online, I don't know if you've ever seen it, where it's like, uh, the Tooth Fairy's lesser known older sister is the Bone Fairy. Oh yeah, like I have seen that one. And it's like this terrifying, like Yeah. So if you stick then, bones under your pillow, does that mean you get out like gold ingots? Yeah, so there was that one. And then 
I couldn't come up with anything to go against Jack Frost because in my brain I was thinking he was more like an elemental kind of thing. So there should just be four of them and they just, I don't know, even. Yeah, like Jack but, Frost is winter and then you have like summer, fall. Yeah. Yeah. And so I, I, I didn't work that into this new, into the actual pitch that I ended up doing, but I'm just, and then I had no idea what to put against the Easter Bunny. It's, the Easter Bunny is a dumb concept. Yeah. But I was trying to think, like, he is the Arbor Day end. all about, like, new beginnings. So I was like, would it just be, like, death? <laughs> yeah, it's just... It's, it's, it's so dark. It's just the Grim Reaper. <laughs> but you could have the Grim Reaper yeah. as a character. He's literally... A, he's a mate. He's, like, a character we believe in, so... That's true. That's yeah. true. So, oh, I, yeah, I didn't even think of the Grim Reaper. I was just thinking, like, death. <laughs> and I was like, that just sounds really wrong. So I don't, I don't want to put that. But anyways, so... Um, I was going to have that as like a rewrite of the movie and have yeah. it so that there's like a group of guardians versus a group of not guardians. <laughs> Anti-guardians. And yeah, anti-guardians. Um, and then I decided instead, and then my other idea was to do like a prequel kind of thing where it's, we get to see how each of the guardians comes to be. Mm. But then I was like, what if I just put them together and we get to see the guardians as they come to be but also they get to fight pitch throughout it and have like, um, pitch be followed by his by like the evil yeah. guardians yeah and then um so i actually turned it into like a five-part series which is funny because i didn't realize there were five books <laughs> well there you go <laughs> um not for kids though because it's gonna be a lot darker but yeah you have a character then, named the grim reaper yeah, well, I didn't, but now, you know, he's in there. Let's just say he is. <laughs> Let's just say he is. Um, And then, so each one will be, like, an hour long. It's almost like a mini series, I guess you could call it. This should have been a TV um, show. Should have been, yeah. Um, I'm going to make yeah, shirts. Okay, so I should get shirts that say this should have been a TV show on them. Do it. Like Cinemaster shirts. Do it. So... Episode one is, um, I wanted to call it Enter Sandman, but I figured there'd be copyright problems there. Maybe. Um, <laughs> so it's just Sandman. <laughs> so the Sandman to me is the oldest guardian. He's been around like for as long as humanity has been around. Um, but so has Pitch or the Boogeyman. He is, and they are the opposites of each other. So um, Pitch Black is like the bad dreams and the nightmares. And then the Sandman is the good dreams and you know, good dreams. The good dreams. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so I was trying to think of a good way to actually like have San like Sandy come to be, but then I was like, eh, no, we'll just have like a quick montage of like different battles of them throughout the different eras. Mm -hmm. Um, and then it ends up the last one is um slightly closer to modern day, um, and we get to see Pitch deciding to try creating a new terror to join him and so he's like sitting there he's like what do i need like i've got bad dreams that's my thing but how do i like what what should it be next so like he went and he was through the bad dreams that he was giving to the children he was trying to figure out like what are people most terrified of and then he really like through the dreams was able to create this new, I guess it's kind of the same idea that you came up with, like this new being of, of belief. Mm -hmm. um, and it ended up being that like, oh, if if I do something bad, like something bad is going to happen to me. And so I, I just use Krampus here because in my knowledge of Krampus, like he's just, you know, the bad children get taken away. I don't have very much knowledge of him. I'm just, you know, generalizing. Yeah, he just um, puts a Krampus in my style. Yeah. <laughs> so the Sandman is trying to do a similar thing. He's like, well, how do I how do I counter this? I should tell people, you know, like, it's OK to make mistakes. Like, as long as you are still trying to be good, like, you'll be fine. And then he makes a plea to the moon. I still have the moon in this one to send someone to help, which is how we're um, at the end of the episode. We see jolly old Saint Nick come to being. We get to see the old Russian man yeah. just like revived. I don't know. I didn't I. It didn't put too much thought into how it no, would all happen, fine. but this is the yeah. plot. So episode two is titled Claws. Um, and then it actually starts off with Pitch and Krampus like arguing a lot because they're both e like evil beings. They're very like dark. Um, 
but they don't work well together because they just have very different ideas of on how to do things. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, so while that's happening, Sandy and Santa are both going around and looking for um, other beings to join their cause and to help keep the um, keep the children safe uh, from these like bad dreams and from being taken away from being bad um, and all of this stuff. And so there's a couple other beings that are just as ancient as Sandy and I, again, didn't come up with any. I just took the tooth fairy. Um, and uh, so she joins and then there was a newer one also created around the same time as the as Santa who is the Easter Bunny yeah um, and they all join forces but I think in my brain I kind of had it that the Easter Bunny is the same age as Santa like mm-hmm. the moon actually sent two people even though Sandy only saw one mm-hmm. um, I didn't know what to name episode three I didn't really have a good idea for it but anyways so pitch and krampus have officially split up um pitch has decided he's decided to try and summon another evil being um and then so he uses his nightmares to again see what are people afraid of like um and and then also at the same time he's using um his nightmares to um capture the tooth fairy's minions and the teeth so same kind of idea but it's, like, maybe, like, 50 years has passed or something. Mm-hmm. Like, I really wanted the progression of time to be visible, mm-hmm. but not, like, this is all happening within a week. Um, so, like, a little more drawn out because they're all mm-hmm. ancient beings. So, time passes differently for them, right? Um, and... Da, 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 where am I? Yeah, so Pitch is doing that, and he's trying to use the teeth or the memories, I guess, from the teeth, um, as well as the other nightmares that he's giving to the children to come up with, like, a good idea for um, for a new antagonist. Um, and at the same time, Krampus is going after Santa and the Easter Bunny because that's just what he wanted to do, whereas Pitch always was like, I'm just going to, like, slink around and figure out something evil and undermine all their plans, whereas mm-hmm. Krampus is just like, I'm going in head first and we're just going <laughs> to ruin everything. So the main team of the Guardians ends up getting split up as the Tooth Fairy is trying to cap or not capture, save her the baby teeth. Um and uh da da Krampus is really good at ruining Christmas, which has only just been growing into like a worldwide tradition at this point. Mm-hmm. Um and he's also getting like he's also ruining Easter and stuff. Um so then the the last scene of episode three ends up being um pitch finds this one very strong memory um of an older brother saving his sister from falling into a frozen lake but then the absolute terror that the younger sister feels as she watches her older brother fall instead and so he's like, I get it. I need to, like, find a way to have it so that, like, all hopes are dashed and, like, this terror takes over. Um, and so he actually goes and finds where that lake was and is like, all right, I'm just going to bring this boy back because apparently he's really good at this. Um, and so they... Um, he works on... I don't know. I don't I, again. I don't know how I was going to do this, mm-hmm. but you know, plot. Um, so he works on trying to bring Jack back, and at the same time, the moon actually takes over and doesn't. This, this is going to be a weird part because the moon doesn't actually talk to the audience yeah. at all. But the moon was actually going to be the one to raise Jack mm-hmm. up, um, and at the same time, it's um, Pitch that thinks he succeeded. Yeah. And so now there's this kind of battle where Pitch is like, oh, you're one of us. You're one of us. Like, you're going to help us terrorize everything. You've got this awesome power. Like, 
you know, this is this is what you need to do. And Jack is like, I don't know. I just want to figure out why I'm here. And Pitch is like, I, I, you're here because I want you here. And he's like, you know what? That doesn't feel right. Like, <laughs> you know, <laughs> get some um, existentialist philosophy up in here. Yeah. So um, episode four is titled Frost. Uh, we also don't know that his name is Jack. I, he's just going to be called Frost for the first, yeah. you know, episode that he's around. Um, and so he actually rejects Pitch. Um, and then it's like a constant back and forth between him and Pitch. And they're like, they end up like actually having like some physical fights, even though they're mostly just arguing. Mm. Um, and then at some point, um, Pitch mentions the memory um, and how the last memory of, of Frost was uh, filled with like so much terror and dread and um he's like this is you know this is why you're here is because this memory and so frost is like oh you know tell me more um because he is now like oh okay so pitch actually knows my background Mm -hmm. like how do i get this for myself so i can figure out why i'm here um and so they yeah so pitch is like oh this is actually good he's interested in this okay um, maybe it'll help Frost become, like, an evil being, um, if he finds out more about himself and, like, this intense moment of dread and terror and fear that he, that he created. Um, and so Frost actually takes the memories and goes to the Tooth Fairy, who initially is like, you need to leave, you're a part of the evil squad, like, get out of here, and then she the evil ends up squad. not doing that well and fighting against him. Yeah, <laughs> and, uh... And Frost is like, no, I'm just here to talk. Like, I, I need to know, I need to know something about myself. Um, and then he explains, like, oh, Pitch told me, like, how we come in, like, how he, like, brought me forth because of, like, this memory. But I need to know more about my, the memories of me so that I can learn more and, like, figure out who I am and why I'm here. Mm-hmm. And then, um, so she ends up just showing him the memory. And then they both sit there and have a good cry about it because they're like, oh my God, that is so emotionally super powerful. Sad, yeah. <laughs> super sad. And then he's like, I understand the terror that that Pitch is trying to bring forth from bringing me here, but this is, I'm not the right person for it for, for that, him yeah. because I did it out of love. Yeah. And, you know, the self-sacrifice was not supposed to be something malicious. Mm-hmm. Um, and so... Um, we end on that realization that it's like, oh no. And then episode five, um, just titled The Guardians, um, is just Jack and the Tooth Fairy end up going and rallying the other Guardians together. And then we maybe get to see a couple other fictional characters, which would be really cool. Um, the Grim Reaper. Maybe not the Grim Reaper. <laughs> Why not? He's a fictional character. Well, he's character. not. He's not really a Guardian. No, but he could be... Um, that doesn't make him a bad person. I don't know. Oh, I'm true. just stuck on my pitch know. with, like, the Grim Reaper doesn't have to be a bad dude. He just helps deal with dead people. I guess. He just says but, it's your time. you know, I, I, I know. I only had two bad people that I could come up with because I had no no brain power when I was writing this pitch. Um, and then uh, they all, like, work together to fight pitch. And then I, I literally said, I suck at writing fights, but it has all the coolest things happening. And at the end... Um, Krampus and all the other bad guys um, end up dragging Pitch away, and then so they could gather their strength for later. Yeah. And then I left it open so that we could have, have like a, sequel, a second season yeah. or a sequel. second season. Yeah, no, that's good. I like that. I like that you like go into to detail about like each of their origins and like even seeing like who they are as like original characters. Like I know that was really interesting for you, like being like, oh, I really want to know who. You know, the, I wish that I knew more about Santa and his <laughs> Russian background. Like he is the most interesting character for me. Yeah, it's really well, yeah, like Russian Santa Claus. So yeah, I kind of want to mm-hmm. know more. But maybe you'll find out in the books because it's you wrote it down, so you're gonna read them. I am. I need you to follow up with me on that. I will. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, that was. I think both of our pitches were great. I had a lot of fun. Yeah, with this, this one. was a fun movie. Like I said, I had a lot of fun watching this movie. I just had some really big like nitpicks in terms of like what the stakes were. You know, mm-hmm. other than figuring out who you are, Jack, like there's no real stakes. Like, so what if the children stop believing in you? Clearly, you still have power. I mean, the stakes are literally just the children's happiness. Yeah, I guess. 
I mean, I, I guess. You don't want children to be happy? I do want children to be those happy. Are, those are low stakes for you? <laughs> You're making it sound like I'm a terrible human being. And you know what? That might be true. But that's, I meant for like, <laughs> you need to have like stakes for your character. Yeah. Right? Not just for the world. Not just for the world. Exactly. Yeah. They need to have a good reason other than just do it for the children. Yeah. Do it for the children. Yeah. Where can people find, or any last minute thoughts about uh, Jack or Rise of the Guardians, Jack Frost? Different movie. No, I, I think I'm I'm good. Yeah, this was this was a fun one. Uh, where can people yeah. find you online? Uh, you can find me on twitch.tv slash Alyssa Lou, A-L-Y-S-S-A-L-O-O-O. Um, and you can find me on Instagram, Alyssa Rose Handmade. And you can find me with Robot Philosopher as well. Yeah, you can find Robot Philosopher anywhere you listen to awesome music, um, like YouTube or iTunes or all of those places, Spotify. You can also find more awesome episodes of Cinemasters, like this podcast, every Tuesday, and our back catalog, which is something like 50-odd episodes now. Um, You can Mm -hmm. also find our uh, video essay series called This Is A Thing every other Thursday, as well as bonus casts at that same time on the opposite Thursday. And look forward to the new year because we should hopefully have some new stuff coming out by the time this airs i will there will be a couple deadlines that have passed that uh mm-hmm. so we'll see some we'll hopefully see some some cool ideas and and shows coming out uh in the new year so stay tuned for that and we'll see you next time peace out bye